my best friend, we're still best friends from high school all the way up until now. He, uh, he was one of the Peloton owners that I was, I was lucky enough to, to test the bike out on and he's fallen off. I've more than doubled his amount of rides now. And he, he asked me the other, we were on the golf course the other day and, and he asked me, he said, man, you were, you were just tiny. Um, and I, I have, I've dropped a bunch of weight and dropped a, a bunch of clothes sizes. And he said, man, you, you've just, you've completely 180 to yourself. And he was like, man, how, how are you staying with us? I was like, I was like, dude, we, we played baseball and football together. Like, come on, you know what you need to do. Just be consistent day after day. And that's the way I've looked at everything um, where, where it comes to, to workouts, where it comes to the way, I, way that I eat. You know, I sat down with a client today and, you know, went out to lunch. Did I want to do uh, something not so healthy? Yeah, of course I did. But uh, in the grand scheme of things, that, that bacon cheeseburger that I could have ordered today will hinder my performance tomorrow. It's more than just your output, more than a bike. When you hear your shout out, you know it's all right. Put on your magic pants and let's go. We're cruising into the power zone. Clip in, set yourself free. Come on and take a ride with me. You know what you need to know and what's it all about. Everything you need, it's on the clip out. Welcome to the Clip Out Podcast, episode 170. This is Crystal O'Keefe. And this is Tom O'Keefe. So if we sound a little different this week, and we might, uh, we, we should preface this by saying our computer completely shit the bed. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, we have some very gracious people that you're going to hear in the upcoming weeks being super patient <laughs> with uh, our interview snafus. Yeah. So right now, this week, uh, we're recording everything's recording through zoom which compresses audio in a way that we don't normally do so the fidelity is better yes and uh so if this sounds a little different that that's what's going on so we have a new computer it should it it it's essentially here it's being assembled right now and should be set up tomorrow oh moving. that's an update i didn't yes. even know and surprise hi it's, and so moving forward uh starting next week it should be back to normal but just uh, letting people know and we should also point out uh, that the people who have been kind enough over the years to donate money, whether it was a one-off yes. or an ongoing thing, this is precisely the sort of things that it goes to. So like, yeah. like we don't know what happened if the thing got hit by lightning or if they're gremlins, or, <laughs> but it was like the computer went down, the soundboard went down. So we just scrapped it all. We're just completely starting. Having from said that, I know it sounds like a really expensive thing. And you're like, Oh, you guys just blew all that money. Let me tell you, our our, uh, our our guy, Kevin, he got some excellent deals yes. on some things. So I feel good about that. Yeah. So. And because of Real Spoilers, the movie podcast, the, the cost gets split yeah. because we both share that computer. And so uh, that that helps both shows out. So uh, so anyway, to the people that have donated over the years, thank you very yes, much. Yes, thank we you. We greatly appreciate it. It's exactly for times like these that uh, that we kind of squirrel that money away. And if we are nothing, if not squirrel. <laughs> so uh, what, pray tell, do you have in store for people this week? Well, we're going to talk about some big changes that happened this week uh, within the, the catalog of classes. Uh, we're going to be talking about past instructors, new instructors, some fun things that Peloton added. Uh, and then, of course, um, well, we're going to talk about I got to give everybody an update on how my marathon, my 26.2 miles went. Yes. And let's see, let's see. Oh, lots of cool stuff that the instructors are up to. So we're going to talk all about that. Awesome. Well, before we get to all that shameless plugs, don't forget we're available on Apple podcasts, uh, Spotify, Google podcast, iHeart, tune in wherever you find your podcast. You can find us while you're there. Be sure and subscribe. So you never miss an episode. And if you would be so kind, you could even leave a review. We have a new review. Oh, yay. This is from Casey McKay. All right. Which that's fun to say. Casey McKay. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I know who that is. And uh, and they say, you guys are awesome. Aww. Crystal and Tom, I've been meaning to review you for a while, so better late than never. I discovered you around episode 99 trying to get smart about the lawsuit. I then listened to episode 100 as my husband and I drove two hours to take our dog in for ACL surgery. Oh, poor puppy. 
you get your dog a tread. <laughs> so early on, I had the privilege of knowing your backstory, which was endearing and has, which has kept us listening. Last summer, uh, just before I hit my two-year anniversary on Crystal's advice, I invoked the warranty, Ooh. which this is very timely for certain yep. groups yep. Uh, we will get to. I received my new Gen 3 screen the next day. I won't tell you how long I've been fighting Peloton help about the lags we were experiencing prior to that you saved me eight hundred dollars my sanity yes. and brought me back to the bike after a frustrating frustrating time Aww. since then you provided concise well i don't know about concise well-rounded <laughs> coverage of all news while saving me from the opp your listeners appreciate the time you invest in the podcast and i thank you for juggling it with your full personal lives Aww. catch on the leaderboard casey and that's the letter K, the letter C, underscore McKay. Well, thank you, Casey. That's so sweet. What a nice review. Yes, thank you very much. And we've got some awesome people in this community. We do. That's very, very kind of them. So also don't forget, you can find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash the clip out. While you're there, like the page, join the group, help you stay up to date, maybe uh, interact with us and other listeners. So that's Almost always enjoyable. <laughs> put, a, put an asterisk by that. But uh, and then, of course, you can sign up for our newsletter at theclipout.com. Get all the links and pictures. And there's there's some really cool pictures this week that you're going to want uh, just sent right to you so you don't have to go hunting for it. And, of course, you can watch this in full HD glory if that's your jam at our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash theclipout.com. While you're there, also subscribe. So whenever a new video gets posted, you get a notification. So there's all of that. Let's dig in, shall we? Let's. It's time for news of the Peloton. I was going to hop on the bike this week and thought I'd start at the beginning with the Stephen Little ride. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what are the odds? Yeah. What are the odds that you this know what, would be Tom, the week? You know, I feel real confident. It just wouldn't be the same. I feel real Whatever you're gonna say, it wouldn't be the same. <laughs> well, you're not even let me try. I wouldn't get the metrics. It would, just would be the same. So all the Stephen Little <laughs> rides and all the Jennifer Jacobs rides, <laughs> Jennifer Jacobs rides, Gone. have have been purged. Purged. They are no more. They are no more. They are X rides. Yeah, and I've gotten so many questions about this what's and, what what's the question they're gone yeah but, but are they really gone yes they're really gone and they really really gone? people want to know why people want to know why and they want to know why because uh, they think it's all to do with the music and i'm not convinced that it had to do with the music because if you look at the rides everything that was prior to 2017 is gone yeah with the very very few exceptions like one of the notable exceptions was um the Broadway ride with Robin from 2016. Uh, so it's there's a lot of stuff that got culled from every instructor. Right. It just happened to be that it also took a bigger bite out of JJ and STL. Now, JJ had more rides beyond 2016. Uh, there's also theories that abound about the fact that she just started up with Ladder. And maybe that was it. Maybe it was a contractual agreement. None of us know. Yeah. It also could be that she asked them to take it down. We, we really I, don't know. I just, I, I find the music thing hard to believe just because I wouldn't think it would just, it, it wouldn't necessarily, I, I just find it hard to believe that it would wipe out a the, time frame, their catalogs in its entire. Yeah, it, it doesn't and, make any sense. And not affect other instructors similarly. So I just, for whatever reason, they just decided time to get rid of these. And and it could be a combination of, of a of couple of things. things. It could also just be that like they're wanting to get rid of the older rides because it just they don't like the production quality as much and they just don't want them out there. That could be you too. Uh, but for whatever reason, it is officially the end of an era. Was a little sad when I realized that. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. I mean, I love our new instructors, I sure. love all the instructors we have now. It's not about that. It's about that, you know, uh the rides that I took back then. They all rep like there's all these like milestones right. of things that I did like like the very first time we went to New York City and we weren't even there for Peloton which is shocking right we were there for um for our family we went to go see the the Macy's Day parade parade at Thanksgiving yeah. that was the first time everyone's Peloton and I rode with STL like and so there will that will never be a thing again no, you know so it's uh it's just sad it's the end of an era but you know at the same time we Peloton is always changing always evolving. 
lots of great things to look forward to and you know it'll be okay i think what's going on is they're paving the way for their new app peloton classic i don't i don't think that's you don't thing. think that's gonna no. be a thing no oh that'd be probably cool, will now there's probably someone in martin <laughs> holy crap peloton <laughs> classic <laughs> scribbling furiously which is nice because that's normally not why they're furious at us, so. <laughs> it's a positive connotation for furious we'll take it so Jennifer Jacobs, though, uh, chimed in. She did chime in. Uh, sort of. Kind of. It was a bit elusive. She tweeted, and I didn't see it anywhere else. I only saw it on Twitter. But she tweeted that her bike shoes would not be collecting dust for long. Literally put dot, dot, dot. Stay tuned. Hmm. Okie dokie. I don't know what that means. I'm curious. Make of that what you will. Yeah. I know the rumors will be a flying. Good news for people in the uck, as the only uck, I call it. As only you call it, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to make it a thing, but it's not catching it's, on. It's not. It's not. I think it's probably just rude to people <laughs> who live there. It's it's your loving way, Tom. That's sure. just what you do. Yeah. So, yeah. So they announced, uh, Peloton announced, that bike service plans, a.k.a. extended warranties, uh, will now be available in the U.K., yeah, this is a big deal because Absolutely. this is uh, this is something they've been clamoring for for a very long time. So uh, brand new, you can get an additional 12 months of coverage for 145 pounds. You can get 27 months of coverage for 185 pounds. So um, as they point out in this article, a single service appointment could cost between 95 pounds and 145 pounds. And they've got all the details below. Um, but one of the things that you're going to want to pay attention to is when you can last purchase it in the United States, you can purchase, uh, I believe, nine months in uh, to your purchase. After nine months, you can go ahead and purchase the extended warranty. So you don't have to purchase it day one, or at least you didn't used to. My point being, go check it out yourself. Do not, do not listen to what I'm saying the U.S. does. Go and look it up for your area because I don't want you to miss out. And the, the thing is, is that if they do need to replace a screen, if they do need to replace a bike, this extended warranty will cover that. Uh, there are things that aren't covered. For example, if you add things to your bike that aren't supposed to be there, that can void your warranty. If you try to change this, if you flip the screen, that voids your warranty. Don't do those things. Um, and if you do do those things, don't document it on social media. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and of course you can go and check out how to initiate a claim, which is right here on the screen. If you're ever checking out our YouTube, you'll be able to see this, but, uh, just wanted to make sure that we made our UK friends aware of this brand new service that Peloton is, is providing. There was a, uh, an interesting moment this week where difficulty tags <laughs> were briefly added to classes. Yeah. And, and just there was a lot of confusion about where these existed. So I just want to spell this out. Okay. They, they have existed on the tread almost since day one on tread classes. And they exist on the app. If you have iOS for some people said the bike classes, um, but they did not, you couldn't see it on the bike. So this week they added it. Okay. But then <laughs> they had such a wide range of classes that were considered intermediate that it really did no good at all. Gotcha. Like classes that are insanely hard were rated the same as classes that are not insanely hard. And so um, it was like 90% of the classes were intermediate. Gotcha. So then the next day it all got taken down. Now we will see, was that some kind of weird glitch? Yeah, will it they, never come back? Or are they fixing it? Were they testing it and then somebody flipped it live by accident? But yeah, it's time like, will tell. It's like I always say, all italics is the same as no italics. Right, right. <laughs> uh, but so we'll we'll see what happens with that. I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> it showed up and then it was gone. Whoops. Peloton stock ticker. So we're gonna do something new this week. We're gonna be joined by someone uh, who talks about Peloton on the internet all the time as well. Yes. Uh, John Mills from Run Lift Live. Hey, John, how's it going? Doing well. How you both doing? Good. Doing great. Uh, and, <laughs> and some people might remember you. Longtime listeners might remember you from what episode four, and we enjoyed it so much we decided to bring you back. A hundred and sixty-six episodes. <laughs> <of> <laughs> 
I knew it was coming. I was just sitting by the phone, Tom. By the phone. That's a ringing endorsement. No, it's honestly like we we didn't have the skill set at first. And like, let's do this and add this and like, yeah, like, we had to we had to ease in to bring in speed. Yeah, so. like you know, I've heard you guys say that on the podcast before. I thought it was so professional what you guys did back then. I was like, wow, they I got off that. I was like, they're really good. They are really, really good. You well, are so you. sweet. We try, yeah. but I and and I mean honestly, I think that we. We came out pretty solid from the start, but I yeah. I feel like we've added more things. Yeah. And you know, it's like any it's you know, it's I from what I've read, yeah, it's like exercise. <laughs> yeah. That, okay. The longer you do it, the okay. better you get at it, the more the more you can do. From yeah. what I've read. That's that's how exercise should work, is what I you're think, saying. Yeah. I mean, you, I think that's how it works. You do more. <laughs> that's right. But you know, I did over time. Look, you're right. I mean the, it's gotten much much more involved and um, and you guys have got cleaner and, and better at it. Absolutely. I noticed that. But my <laughs> initial kind of, you know, take <laughs> I was on, I was like, this is some good stuff. <laughs> well, especially when you're on, which is like so, so we're gonna talk about uh, just some things going on in like in the more the business end of Peloton. Yes. And uh, and so there was an article in uh, from Motley Fool. This week, they just go by fool.com if you're looking for their URL about why Peloton stock has jumped. Right. Yes. But first of all, generally, when I look up information and I get to the Motley Fool, they all, their articles always have some form of Peloton hate in them. Have you noticed that? They do. And what, what my favorite part about Motley Fool sometimes is they will write two, I feel like they write two totally different versions of the same article one pro one con and then they just throw them both out there and see which gets clicked yeah i mean right. to, to be fair i think it's because there are literally different analysts with different opinions but but yeah like <laughs> right, right. All in the same place <laughs> but, i mean I, but but i mean ultimately um the stock jumping the, when i initially read it i thought all that information they're talking about are things we already know right, right? Uh, uh, a new lower cost tread coming out, like we've known that since Jill Woodward said that, you know, four months ago. Right. Exactly. Right. Or, or, or wow, this COVID thing is going to cause people to work out at home. Really? Really? <laughs> That's a real shocker. Right, yeah, I was <laughs> stunned by that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, quote like, CNC I, Music Factory, things that make you go. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, then I thought, okay, well, they said Stifle had, had upped their price target from 62 to 72. And, and, but, you know, to jump 7%, I mean, I, we've heard analysts come out and give their guidance updates over the past, you know, year. But I've never seen that type of a jump in one given day over just an analyst. So what do you think is going on? So my original thought was, there's, some, there's just something I don't know. You, know, <laughs> you, know, you remember when, you remember when, uh, just, I, we, you know, back in like April or whenever it was, Justin Post from B of A, he's like, he just, he writes, Oh yeah, and I was just meeting with uh, uh, Peloton, and uh, yeah, there's gonna be this new bike. Yeah, he and just thought, slid that in there. He just slid it in. He kind of like slid it in in between a bunch of other stuff. Yep. And I'm thinking, was he supposed to say that? And <laughs> how did he know that? Right? Like, you know, so that that made me get this thought that you know, there's just some things that maybe the analysts here, or maybe other folks here that we just don't hear. But you know, uh, one of the folks in my group, Hubert, he mentioned he's like. John, I think that was just a gap fill. You know, he he man, he looks at like the, the the price targets and how the stock is moving, and he saw it as the stock just hitting a low run, getting to the bottom, and investors trying to jump in where they thought it had hit the bottom of that gap, so that they could like ride it back up. Uh, right. Okay. That was his okay. thought, and you know he's probably right. Maybe that's all it was. Um, I love I, the fact that we bring you in for your business expertise in the first piece of first piece of information you give us is maybe there's just things I don't know. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> well, you know, Run, Lift, and Live, you guys know this, Run, Lift, and Live was just me throwing out a bunch of parodies and then stuff about my workout regimen so that folks could help help me be motivated to keep doing it right. and maybe help them. That's all it was until I invested in September last year and then, you know, that fan mind starts colliding with the investor mind and I'm going, well, I want to say some stuff now, but I can't put it into OPMP because they <laughs> might jump all over me. <laughs> but, you know, the investor mind might be a little more critical. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, right. So I, I, I started doing that stuff in on my page, hoping that, you know, folks would validate what I'm thinking, or right. they would tell me that's wrong, or, you know, they would help me. You know, that was kind of the thought. If it, if it matters at all, I kind of think, I kind of think that what you're saying is more realistic. And here, here's why. We know that that, that next stock call is coming up real right. soon. Right. And we also know that they are expected to be announcing some big things very soon. So I, personally, I think that your initial reaction is correct. I don't know what that thing is, but there, there's some whispers out there on the street and they know, they know that it's coming. That's what I, you know, that's still in my mind as well. I kind of think that as well. And, 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 um, and then on top of that, I mean, we already know that, um, they're likely going to beat every one of their, you know, their estimates, the market. Yeah. Numbers. I mean, they, so they say they have 886,000 subscribers in their Q3 reporting. Right. Which ended March 31st. And then, and they report that on May 6th. And then a week later they go, Oh, by the way, we've got a million now. <laughs> so, so, so if you piece that together between March 31st and May 12th, they gained 114,000 new connected fitness subscribers. And there were six more weeks till the end of Q4. They might so, be 2 million by now. <laughs> so, I mean, they're obviously gonna be at 1.1, 1.2, and their guidance was 1.05. So we know they're gonna beat that. Yeah. So, you know, it's gonna be good news. So I kind of assume the same, like, like people are gonna be trying to get in along with the thought that you said, like, we know something's coming out, something's about to come out. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. That was kind of my thought as well, but I don't well, know, maybe so, it's the gap fill, maybe it's that, I don't know. So we're expecting good news from Peloton, but transition to what could be bad news for Peloton. Yeah. Uh, what's your take on the idea of Apple entering the world of fitness and fitness equipment? Yeah, that's an interesting one for me because ultimately, you know, their Apple One, you're talking about the Apple One package and the tiered packages yes. of right. their connected uh, fitness subscriptions. You know, I mean, that's clearly them trying to uh, like catch take <laughs> more out of their subscription offering. Like they're right. trying, right? Like so they're lowering the price if you buy it in this bundle than if you subscribe to these things individually. Yeah. Um, so I think that was their ultimate intent. I think um, their Apple, what is it called? Apple Virtual Fitness. I think that's kind of a, a that's kind of a leap into that. That's kind of secondary. Right. And so I guess if you're like a kind of long investor on Peloton, that if, if you're probably thinking, yeah, that's only going to compete against um, their digital offering. Right. And, and, and it's kind of a second thought. So, you know, what is that going to do? Yeah. I yeah I, for me, though, I'm, not, I'm kind of a long-ish investor. I mean, in Peloton. I mean, I'm long, I guess. Ask me tomorrow. Kind of, you know? So... If you're thinking about it from that perspective, you're, if you're in it in, with that perspective, what did Apple today say? They, they now hit a $2 trillion market cap today. I mean, they could buy anybody and they can generate news and hype. Even if they're doing badly with whatever they're doing, they can generate news and hype. And the market reacts on news and hype. So if you're long-ish, if, if you're short or long-ish, I mean, it could affect Peloton stock price in the short term. So for me, I'm like, well, these guys stop, you know, from, you know, that's how I'm seeing it. Whereas if you talk to Mike Kale, like he's truly long. So this to him, he's like, so what? Yeah, yeah I, I, I think long term, I just, I think Apple's too late to the game. Yeah. I think, you know, right. I know a lot of people are, are saying like, oh boy, when Apple goes after something, they get it. And I'm just like, really? What's t name a show on Apple TV? Right. right? Exactly. Like Tom, they had a movie from Tom Hanks. Can you name right. it? <laughs> like, you know, and I mean, maybe a couple people can, I'm sure some people can, but, right. but I mean, I just feel like, you know, they're, they're going after Netflix hot and heavy and I don't yeah. feel like they're even making a dent, not in the pop right. culture zeitgeist the way you need to, right. you know, I mean, Hulu has, Hulu has hit shows yeah. and, 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 and the, Amazon, and, even Amazon has hit shows. and, oh, they and, got competition there. Yeah. yeah. I just don't. Big. I just don't feel like Apple's got any traction the, there. The other yeah. thing that, that I feel like with Apple, and this is just me personally, I mean, everybody knows I'm an Android girl. For I'm, now. Android. Too. I'm Android guy. I'm Android as well. Oh, Thanks. Uh, <laughs> but, but here's <laughs> the thing. How, how can they 
compete on the same level as Peloton, even if they put all their money behind it, unless they bring hardware into this equation, I just, I just don't see it. I just don't see it really doing much. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I, I, so again, ultimately my thought is, is at this point is that they're not really even trying. There's a lot of slices in this pie and they're, they're just trying to get their little, their slice out of the yes. you know, subscription fitness kind of, I, I don't, I agree with you there. Again, from my perspective is I just think they're big enough to create enough noise that will create fluctuation. And I and think that that's is, a solid point there. I that's do. kind of annoying, you know, but. <laughs> Like stop it, Apple. Like stop. Like when I was a kid, I used to always go down to the playground, play basketball, and there was always one kid that came to play, and he didn't really want to play. He just wanted to bully everybody. <laughs> you're like, you're like, come on. That was a foul. That was a foul. Then when he left, we could all have fun. Like you know, Is you're, that playing, how you, that how you you're playing basketball, and he's playing hockey. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for, for joining us and giving yes. us your insight. And before, uh, before we move on, tell people where they can find all your stuff during the week. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can check out uh, my Run, Lift, and Live page or Run, Lift, and Live group, both on Facebook. Um, you can check, out, check me out on Instagram, Run, Lift, and Live, or I got a Run, Lift, and Live website as well, so you can check that out. <laughs> and I love your, your gifts. I hope you call them <laughs> gifts, not gifs. I love your gifts. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, whatever as long as you're using them, I don't care what. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank Thanks. you. Guys. Appreciate you guys. Thank Have you. Have a good night. You too. Your corn tread <laughs> has finished. It has. Well, you finished the corn tread. <laughs> I don't think the corn tread is quite yet finished with you. It's so much better than it was. It was pretty bad. Like that's not in your head. Ah, uh, like that I, uh... was. You you had some damage. I did have some damage. Should, should I talk about like the what I went through during? I maybe a little bit, yeah. So let me just say that about mile six, I was feeling real good. Yeah, I remember. I was like, oh, this is great. Yeah. This is no problem at all. I got this. Something happened right around mile ten. Your feet exploded. Well, it was mile ten that I started to be like, okay. I'm getting tired and my heart rate wasn't staying down. I wanted it to stay in zone two the right. entire time. Mile 14 is when I started experiencing a sharp pain in my right foot and couldn't figure out why. And then I took my shoe off and I found out. I found out that my foot had indeed exploded. You had a huge blister. I am not even exaggerating for people watching the YouTube. It was legit that big and and we also we posted pictures uh at our facebook page facebook.com slash the clip out or in the group or wait i didn't post the pic those pictures on the page those are only in the group so if you want to see those pictures you got to join the group but yeah uh but it was bad that is not you being a wuss it was bad and i was like at that point honestly if i had not publicly told people <laughs> i was doing this I'm pretty sure I would have stopped. You've been like, half marathon's good too. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I, I totally get that. Well, Seriously I, considered it. So Brian and I ran up to the store mm -hmm. and uh, ran up to Walgreens, braved the COVID mm -hmm. and ran up to Walgreens mm -hmm. and got you mole skin and some other, something for blisters and then Neosporin with pain reliever. And uh, you also handed me some Advil. Some Advil. Yep, and some codeine, <laughs> and I and no some codeine. Heroin. I was joking, and uh, I got back on the tread, and without any actual drugs. Tom's joking. Yes, um, joking. for anybody who doesn't have a sense of humor. So uh, <laughs> then I I finished it, like, and I I got up to like I didn't pee again after that. I was afraid to get off the tread. You're sweating it all out. Well, I was afraid that if I stopped. Totally. You that I wasn't going to get back on. Yeah, I get that. And so the last 10 miles, I just, I just had willed myself through. And you did. I did. I did. Now, it was not impressive for anybody who uh, cares about times. It was <laughs> the saddest marathon time probably ever recorded. 
Oh, I because I that. walked the entire thing. But you, but you did it. I did. And I, we were waiting for you when you were done. Oh my god. We had a finish line for you. It was, it was great. Toilet paper. Toilet paper finish line. But we, I figured my thought process there was it, you would still have the strength to break through it. That I was that I was poop. <laughs> yeah. That no. Was <laughs> that you would be so tired <laughs> if I use something stronger, you get stuck. I and know. So I was I... trying to set you up to win. And then we had a beer waiting for you, <laughs> and then uh, and then we ordered uh, frozen custard and had it delivered to the house. Yes, so, it was it was wonderful. And then the next day, I could barely move. Yes. Uh, that night, even it hurt really bad. And the next day, I pretty much did not move unless I had to. Correct. Uh, and then I brought you a bucket to pee in, so you didn't have to get up. <laughs> I'm pretty. That's not true either. Um, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that the blister on my right heel got infected yesterday and it was really gross and nobody needs to see pictures of that <laughs> and then um i had to peel off a bandage which was like peeling off glue uh and then i put a completely different setup on it that tom helped me with and uh he's he's been he's been super helpful you and brian were so supportive and so many people from the community i am amazed 26 miles eight hours from yeah. 8 a.m to 4 p.m our time i was never alone on that leaderboard that's awesome there was never one time that I was alone. That's awesome. And uh, just a special shout out to Mel Edwards, who was on there, Shelly Gherkin, who's on there, um, Suze, Susan from Texas, and uh, and then of course Ladon, or, um, Leslie Ladon. It was all her idea, so she was on there all day. And you're um, still talking to her? Yeah. <laughs> she got done in like two hours. Since it was all her crazy. idea. Yeah. She was like, no big deal. This is the second time she's done it this month. Oh. I know. I know. Uh, so yeah, it was uh, it was a crazy day. Um, I'm very proud of myself that you I did should it. Should be. Um, I for all of you saying when are you going to sign up for a, a an actual outdoor marathon? I don't know that I ever will. <laughs> I don't know why you guys do this to yourselves. I really don't. I think that every week, but all of this, but, but I don't hey, know. to each their own. That was pretty pretty intense. Yeah. It was it was an awesome experience to to be able to say I did it. Absolutely. So I guess watch this space for Corn Tread 2021. Well, let's hope gonna we're make not it still an, in Gonna make it an annual event? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need something bigger than Andy's at the end. <laughs> well, if you insist. <laughs> Getting the psychological edge with Dr. Jen. Back again is Dr. Jen Mann, licensed marriage, family, and child therapist and sports psychology consultant. You may know her from VH1's Couple Therapy with Dr. Jen or VH1's Family Therapy with Dr. Jen or her long-running radio show, The Dr. Jen Show. She's written four best-selling books, including The Relationship Fix, Dr. Jen's Six-Step Guide to Improving Communication, Connection, and Intimacy. And you might also know her from the clip out. It's Dr. Jen. <laughs> hey. Hi. Oh, it's good to have you back. Always great to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so last time we talked about people like me <laughs> who don't work out at all. Uh, so now, segueing away from that, please. Uh, <laughs> we thought we'd talk about how do you know if maybe you're working out too much? Like, obviously, working out is is a goal, I've been told, and a good thing. But you can do good things too much sometimes. Absolutely. And, and how do you yeah. know where that line is? Well, I think there are a few really significant red flags. Okay. Um, if you are not tending to business, whether it is, you know, assignments for work or taking care of your kids or taking care of your relationship or um, any responsibilities that you have because you're so busy working out and you are working out for long periods of time in a given day. It's not that like, you're like, oh, I'm going to do a 10 minute apps class. You know, my kids can wait 10 minutes. I'm talking about you're working out for an hour and a half while your baby's screaming and crying. We have a problem. Okay. And, or, or if people in your life are coming to you and saying like, hey, you know, this feels a little excessive. It feels like you're never around. And it's, it's a, not just one person, but like, you're getting feedback from multiple places that your MIA in your family, in your relationships, it, that's a sign. Um, also injuries. Your body will tell you if you are finding yourself 
frequently getting injured, it's a sign that you're overtraining. Also, if you're finding that you are obsessing about your workout and, you know, as someone who's recovered from an eating disorder, you know, I was not well for about 10 years. And for me at the time, even if I wasn't thinking about food or exercise, it was a constant background noise in the back of my head that I could be carrying on a conversation at the same time in the back of my mind, thinking about the exercise I needed to do, what I was going to do next, how much I had, how much I hadn't done and then all that sort of stuff. If you find that you've got that obsessive tape going through your head, that's a red flag that this is not you're not in a healthy place with your relationship to exercise and or your body. So for lack of a better comparison uh, or word, if if you were to view it through the prism of an addiction, how do you mm-hmm. determine what's appropriate? Because, you know, if 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 you're drinking too much, if you're if you're on drugs, it's it's very binary. But with something yeah. like exercise or or food, if it's if it's eating, like, how do you know where the how do you integrate that into your life in a way that's healthy but doesn't spin out of control for you well i think if if you're getting tip-offs like any one of those things that i just named if if Mm -hmm. you're getting feedback or you're having those experiences and and you go oh wow she just named that list that's me i really identify with a bunch of those things the thing to do is to get help and to, from an outside source, because you, you need a neutral party, whether it is your general practitioner to say like, OK, what is a healthy amount of exercise for me to do? This is what I'm doing. And to have someone who is neutral and is invested in your well-being and also knowledgeable about medicine and or psychology to be able to say like, hey, here's what I recommend for you. Don't don't exceed an hour a day, however many days a week or whatever your doctor says is you need to then really listen to that and also to note what is your reaction when that person says that. If you feel panic, if you feel anxiety, if you feel a lot of feelings bubbling to the surface, then that's a therapy issue. And that's something that needs to be dealt with in therapy because look, in times like this, we're in a pandemic, our, we have so many problems with injustice and race and conflict and just it's such a high conflict, stressful time, unemployment, that a lot of people are turning to activities or substances to deal with their feelings, some in healthy ways and some in very unhealthy ways. And that, you know, I remember in, and this is kind of an eating disorder example, because there's a fine line between excessive exercise and eating disorder behavior. And I remember one time in a therapy session talking to a client of mine who was obsessing about food and her weight and exercise. And I said to her, if you weren't obsessing about these things right now, what would you be obsessing about? And I'll never forget, she looked at me and she said, I'd be obsessing about killing myself. And I said, wow, like, Mm. let's talk about what's underneath that. And we have a tendency to use substances and activities to avoid thinking or feeling pain, even when they cause us pain. Like I know when I was eating disordered, it was easier for me. It was incredibly painful. And I suffered enormously obsessing about food and my body and this and that. But that pain was easier than dealing with the pain of what was underneath it. And in order to recover, I had to deal with the underlying issues and that allowed the eating disorder to ultimately dissipate along with a lot of choices I had to change in my life that that needed to be healthier, more well-balanced in terms of my relationship with food. But it's when we are doing something excessively or compulsively, it is always the the it's the red flag it's 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 the sign that there's something else deeper going on that is causing us pain that we need to deal with awesome. so that's, that's a really good reminder yeah of that it's a lot to a uh, lot to take in it is i i think of it like anger is a smoke screen emotion and so i i'm kind of using yep. that in my mind as an equation like that's equal to like if you if you're feeling anxiety about how often when somebody says, hey, you might want to slow down, then there's some other stuff underneath there. Exactly. 
Exactly. And and that's a great analogy because anger is a secondary emotion. There's always something underneath it. And with compulsive activity, there's always something underneath it. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, for taking time to join us today. Uh, Until next time, where can people find you? People can find me on all my social media at Dr. Jen Mann, two ends on Jen, two ends on man, and my InStyle magazine column, Hump Day with Dr. Jen, and on my website, drjen.com, spelled out D O C T O R J E N N dot com. Awesome. Awesome. Peloton in the news. Deadline.com reports that Emma Lovewell has signed with UTA. Yes. Which is a big deal for people that don't know. UTA is a big time Hollywood agency that represents lots of big name acts and like musical acts and actors and whatnot. So so that's a big deal. Who all does, who like, give us an example. Oh, I don't remember off the top of my head. I know that most of the UTA acts are so big that when I'm looking to book bands, they don't return my phone calls. (laughs) <laughs> so I don't deal with UTA all that much because my where I work isn't that important. But uh, but UTA is 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 a very very significant agency. So uh, that's well, that's a big deal. I thought it was interesting that it said that it was going to rep her in all areas, including digital content, endorsements, publishing, and podcasting. I just thought it was interesting that it got it thrown in there. Yeah, it's hard to say like if she's actually plotting a podcast of some sort. Or if it's just something that they throw in everything now, because it's it's becoming such a, a natural brand extension for people that they might just throw it in that way. It do, she doesn't go off and do a podcast and they're left out of that deal as well. So it's you know probably like a, a three sixty deal where basically anything she does they get a piece of. The other interesting thing about this is that she's been at Peloton for the past three years. Do you remember when we interviewed her as a brand new instructor? I do. That was three years ago. Wow. Yeah. We've been Holy doing this for cow. A long time. Yeah, we have. We have been doing this podcast. We have all of the history here. <laughs> That's crazy. So uh, it talks about that she's from a dance background. She has also sponsored a Under Armour Ambassador and has appeared in national ad campaigns for Target, JCPenney, Garnier, and Athleta. I have no doubt that she will continue to be huge news. We're going to see her in a lot of places. I think this changes a lot of things. I think so too. And I think you're going to see more and more Peloton instructors signing deals like this. Yep. It's pretty cool. And then Pop Sugar had a, a pretty fun article about what instructors wear on and off the bike and or tread. <laughs> Got to throw that out there. Yeah, you do. I don't want the tread getting mad at me. So did you happen to read this one? I didn't read it, but I scrolled through some of the pictures. Anything of note? No, I mean, it was all just girl clothes. (laughs) So, I mean, I'm like, that's more girl clothes. Yep. Well, I thought it was interesting because the person who wrote this had the same kind of questions that I have. Like, do they work with a Peloton uh, stylist? Do they they tell them? Like, just, is there somebody that's like, this bra goes really well with these leggings, you know, and this, this person went through the same kind of questions that I did. Right. And, and then I love that they're like, where does she, Rebecca Kennedy has so many metallic leggings. Where does she keep them all? <laughs> uh, so she got to talk to Robin, Ali, uh, Olivia, Jess Sims, and Rebecca Kennedy and Bex Gentry, who everybody confirmed they all have free reign. They get, to, they have to wear at least one Peloton branded article of clothing, and, but they encourage us to be authentic to ourselves and do as we want. I love cropping tanks, cutting, cutting sleeves off tees, making capris into bike shorts and layering sports bra. Je, Jess Sims told me about her personal style, but all six women got even more personal than that. It's cool. We sweat together and dished on their all time favorite moments, along with details about their personal style. And I know you won't be mad when I ask them to name their favorite training shoes, what you thought I'd leave you hanging. And then uh, they did leave us hanging. <laughs> so that's really cool though. I, I like hearing that because um, that is what I have heard. That's right. what I've heard through the grapevine. But I love hearing that like confirmed that they have to wear one thing that's Peloton and then they can do whatever they want. And it's, it's crazy because they do, they alter the, the tank tops and stuff like that. 
Did they, you see that there's a whole slideshow there? No. Yeah, open. I didn't think you did. Open it back oh, up. I, I share it so I can see. It. Oh, <laughs> I'm like it's open. Can't you see my screen? Oh my gosh. So then she has a little tiny article with each one. Yeah. Oh. So if you scroll up a little bit, if you scroll up, if you use that arrow up top, you it it will move within the page, and you won't like you're scrolling past the picture. You can just scroll through them now. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, I was trying to get the information. Yeah, below. totally. I was just thinking people might want to see the pictures if they're on YouTube, since you're not going to sit there and, and read them all. Because some of the the blurbs that they write under the pictures are a little lengthy. But you can find all of this uh, at, at popsugar.com, or if you sign up for the newsletter at theclipout.com, it will be in your uh, your show notes this week with links. Yeah. And then maybe you can find the slideshow since I could Yeah, the slideshow was really buried. The button was very buried because I, I, I spent time looking for it because I was like, they're talking about all these outfits and they're not showing you any pictures. I really thought the button, they made the button very difficult to, to find. Yeah. It really kind of buried the, the, the meat of the article, which is if you're coming to read this article, you want to see the, the instructors in the outfits that they're talking about. So, Absolutely. So there you go. Yeah, that's great. Now that we've fought our way through that. Yeah. <laughs> and then Ben Aldis was featured in Forbes magazine. He was. So is there like a separate UK Forbes or something? I don't think so. And it this doesn't web look like it. And is. this website is just Forbes.com. It's not like Forbes.co.uk. Yeah. So just curious. I think it's just regular old Forbes. Oh, interesting. Well, um, I thought it was cool because they talked about his financial background um, before he started with Peloton. And I love reading about where the instructors were before they came to Peloton because everybody's got a story. Right. And everybody's, you know, you don't, ju not everybody just is like, I would like to be a professional athlete. Well, also like Peloton is so new. It's not like anybody grew up thinking, I want to be a Peloton instructor. Absolutely. So anybody at the moment that becomes a Peloton instructor, by virtue of definition, they kind of fell into it. Not to say they fell into fitness necessarily or being a fitness instructor, but like it couldn't have been your goal until relatively recently. So, you know, it there are so many people kind of funneling in from different areas. It's fascinating. It is. And, and I remember when we interviewed Ben and Leanne, he talked about this too. Um, but it's, it's just nice to hear from another perspective. Um, he had always been fit and he had always played in team sports. And then, um, he was actually teaching classes at a boutique studio in his very limited spare time. So he was teaching two to three, two classes, three days a week, and then he would go to the office and then he would also teach on weekends. So that's crazy and dedication. Absolutely. It also seems like there's a disproportionate number of instructors who came to Peloton through the world of finance. Well, there's Matt Wilpers. I, say, I remember Wilpers. I feel like we interviewed a female instructor who also came in through finance. Hmm. But what would that have been? It all kind of blurs together after yeah. a while. Yeah. I don't uh, remember if, I don't remember that one if that's but true. But it does seem like there's a lot of finance connections. The corporate world for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the founders of SoulCycle and Flywheel was on, I believe it was MSNBC, talking about her thoughts about how gyms will do in this new world in which we find ourselves. Yeah, it was uh, CNBC, and um, and it talks about it was Ruth Zuckerman. So okay. so for those that know, she's the co co-founder of SoulCycle and flywheel. She started off at one and went to the other. Gotcha. Uh, and then she came on Squawk on the Street and she talked about virtual workouts and how the pandemic is is going to solidify the approach long term. Um, so, okay. It had like this long five minute yeah, commercial, commercial. Yeah. and I was like, uh, okay. But yeah, so her take was she thought that, uh, that, that gyms are going to be okay, that they're going to peacefully coexist. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. A lot of the feedback I got right away was, was uh, well, yeah, she's just trying to sell something. Yeah, I kind of got the same vibe when I watched it, that it's like that she wants that to be true. And I don't think gyms are going to completely go away. There's certainly going to be some people that either don't have the upfront cost for something like this, or they do want a variety that, that a gym can offer. 
and they don't want to have to buy multiple pieces of equipment. But and they may also not have space. I mean, there's there's a lot of re or or maybe they move a lot and they just don't want to have right. the stuff to move. I mean, but, and some people just enjoy the 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 ritual, the routine of going to the gym. Like that's yeah. part of the experience for them. So I mean, I don't think we're going to see a world where there's never any more gyms, but I. I certainly think you're going to see one hell of a contraction. In I do field. too. I think it's going to be, you know, this gym buying that gym. You're going to see like just that huge cycle where everything right. just starts to kind of collapse in on itself. And and probably we're going to continue to see new things be created and, and who knows what that'll end up being. Yeah, know? absolutely. I, I, but I, I do think it's a little Pollyanna to be like, Oh, it'll be okay. Well, I, I, I included it because of who she is. Sure. You know, it's, uh, it's very interesting. Obviously, she's a mover and shaker in that world, and her, and her opinion is to be valued. Well, I you, just you know, I find it hard to believe that it would be true. <laughs> she, yeah, definitely. definitely. It's very interesting. Uh, well, we will have to see. And, you know, uh, on the heels of that, talking about, uh, you know, gym versus at-home stuff, you know, it's not just Peloton anymore. Tonal's out there as well. Absolutely. And it's a great compliment to a Peloton. Oh my gosh, yeah, because you can't beat Peloton for cardio. I, I also I also don't think you can beat Tonal for strength. I mean, the programs that they have put together and the way that you don't have to think about what you're doing next, right? The weights you're gonna use. It's so natural. It's so easy. Yeah, you don't have to re remember what moves you're going to do, but you also don't have to remember what your weights are for each move. It's going to do all that for you. It's going to slowly stair-step you up the ladder, just one pound at a time so you don't feel overwhelmed, and, and it's going to do it all. You're not even going to notice that it's happening. Yeah, and they have some really cool new things that they've added. They've added uh, form um, feedback in the last couple of weeks. It's been about a month, and that is amazing because – you don't have to be right in front of the camera. The, the, the it's not actual, using the camera. No, it's not using the camera. The sensors are in the weights and the arms, and it knows how you're using it, and it can tell, and it will correct you if you're not doing the correct form. Um, the other cool thing that, that they've added is someday they are going to add that, that camera feature, but for those of you who are triathletes, they have an entire triathlete program that they just added they have two of them one that's all about endurance and one that's all about power and uh the cool thing about that is that they used like one of the most famous guys in the triathlon community and he is a six-time world champion of triathlonness triathlonness yes <laughs> so and he's gonna he's he's a guest instructor i mean that's just really cool they, right they are so great about listening to what people want and bringing it in and it's, this is a great example of that it's like not only is it like having your own personal trainer it's like having your own world expert personal yeah trainer. you're yes you're world-class personal there trainer you're getting the best of the best yeah it's a smart at-home gym that replaces every machine in the weight room and you can try tonal for 30 days risk-free if you go to www.tonal.com you get a hundred dollars off smart accessories when you use the promo code the clip out at checkout that's www.tonal.com promo code the clip out tonal be your strongest Peloton added new badges this week for the annual challenge. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, the top at the beginning of this year, when they added these, the top number that you could get was 5,000 minutes. Okay. Uh, they have now added a six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So your top badge is now 10,000 minutes. That's almost double. It is. It is <laughs> double. Uh, I just think it's hilarious that instantaneously every, there were a lot of people complaining that it wasn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. I, I, I don't have that problem, but, uh, <laughs> Nor do I. <laughs> yeah, I think your challenge, your badge is to remain zero. That's <laughs> your badge. So far so good. <laughs> Hannah Frankson will be in Vitality UK IGTV doing a five part strength series. Yeah. And it starts today. It's an interesting collaboration because it's with an insurance company out of the UK. Okay. Also interesting and of note, I think significant note, 
is that this is the first time we've seen a strength program come out of the UK. Ah. So uh, even though it's not on Peloton per se, I think we are gearing up to that, particularly because what also dropped this week are the strength warm-ups. Well, it seems to be if you're warming up for strength, then you need the actual strength to go along with it. Well, they already have those strength warm-ups are all across the the world. They're not just in the (laughs) UK. So uh, they're adding the warm-ups for the content that already exists. Oh, okay. But but it's still of note because I feel like this this is this signifies this signals to everyone that Peloton is about to do something big with strength because all of a sudden we have warmups, all of a sudden we have Hannah Frankson doing this this five part series, and I've been hearing that there are a lot of surveys going around in the background to Peloton members about strength. Interesting. So. Stay tuned because I think there's more coming. Watch this space. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of watching space news this week. Yeah. Ross Rayburn is doing an Instagram live with Billy Porter. Yeah, it was today. Uh, It was pretty cool. So Billy Porter, if you haven't heard of him, is like an amazing artist. Um, What are the four big awards that you can win? Like the the EGOT The the EGOT, Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony. So he only hasn't gotten one of those. Wow. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you know this. I'm only four away. <laughs> really? Yeah, I don't like to brag. Well, you know the thing is, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> I always got one up. Me. Um, it was cool though, and uh, I had no idea that Ross Rayburn knows Billy Porter in real life. They just kind of slid that in during the talk today. It's real cash. Yeah, real cash. Yeah. That at one point they were hanging out. How about that? And um, um, also Billy Porter, what a personable guy. Um, he was talking about how he feels about the state of the world today. Yeah. Um, and uh, he was just very, very open. And he uses yoga to deal with those feelings. He's been using it a lot. Um, I believe a direct quote was, a, a paraphrased quote, sure. was that if he had not been doing yoga in the last several months, he literally would have exploded by now. <laughs> that the, uh, the rage that he feels is so intense. And I can identify with that. Um, so I, I thought it was really cool, nice conversation between those guys. So if you missed it, um, try to go check it out. It might still be up there for a couple of days, but you know, keep an eye on our channels because we try to always bring you this information so you can, you can watch it live. Absolutely. And then, uh, Jess Sims is teaming up with DC's education workforce. She is. Yeah. They're going to do a special professional development all about building a thriving community online because all of the teachers are going back to school and they're going to be virtual. So I thought, what a great way to do that because Jess Sims talking about backgrounds and where Peloton instructors come from, used to be a teacher, used to be a school principal, and she she often teaches the, the fitness for families. So this is a perfect fit for her. Awesome. And then Aditi Shaw has a new meditation basic series? Yes. And it's all about if you're brand new to meditation, here's how you do it. They're little snippets. So it, it helps you get started and not be overwhelmed. A lot of people that want to try meditation are overwhelmed because they think it's got to be done a certain way. Sure. And it doesn't need to be done a certain way. So she's going to walk you through all of that. Awesome. And uh, we talked about this last week, but Alec Toussaint's new line is here and your stuff arrived shockingly. I know. You purchased things. Yes. I love it. It's awesome. Do better. That's my, and he even like includes a little postcard with his little signature on it that it's a pledge that we're all going to do better. And I will keep my pledge, Alex. (laughs) Peloton birthdays. So Rebecca Kennedy had a birthday on the 13th. She did. And then uh, by the time this airs, there will have been, uh, uh, what, two, three important. Peloton birthday. So well, there's only one listed. Former here. instructor Nicole Moline had a birthday on the 17th. Oh. So look at that. Jill Foley, her birthday is on the 20th. Aww. Which is the second most important Peloton related birthday on August 20th. Because <laughs> August 20th is your birthday. So we will now pause while everybody sings happy birthday in their car. Oh, definitely don't do that. No, we're not really. <laughs> And then uh, getting out in front of things, if you want to sell, if you want to get your uh, keyboard ready to send birthday wishes to Aditi Shaw on the 24th. Lots of Leos in Peloton world. Lots of Leos. (laughs) It's awesome. Very cool. Checking in with the Peloton community. 
So joining us today via the magic of ZoomTube is Rich Payton. Hey, Rich, how's it going? Hey there, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. How, how did you originally find Peloton? Oh, so a little bit of a long story. Um, I, I, I guess the, the easiest way to, uh, to start is I was massively out of shape. And uh, in my prior life, uh, prior to a couple of injuries, I was a CrossFitter. And um, just had no desire to go back to the gym after I, uh, after I recovered from my injuries and started lo- looking for something a little more low impact uh, sure. on, on my knees and back. Yeah. Came across Peloton, uh, talked to a couple friends who already had bikes. I, I was extremely lucky being able to test out the bike uh, from a couple of folks that I know. And um, the next thing I knew, I had a bike and the app and I was sweating in my floor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so how long ago was that? It's been a crazy eight months. Uh, I started officially on January 1st, but I received my bike on December 18th, um, 2019 and uh, started from there. Okay. Because I, smart, I, I, smart man, like, <laughs> no, not at Christmas. Like, right. Like you're like, it's Never. Christmas. I'm not going to start it at Christmas. That would no. be, no, there's too much That's turkey. It. There's too much candy. Yeah. I actually started do- started a diet once on Thanksgiving Day. Oh no! I, and my logic was, <laughs> if I I gave up Thanksgiving dinner, and so for, oh. so for the rest of the time that I was on the diet, I'm like, well, like, oh, maybe I want to cheat and have pizza today. You gave up Thanksgiving dinner, and you can't make it through a Wednesday <laughs> without pizza. And then it's like, okay, like this kind of that was my my mind. It worked. I lost like sixty pounds in a year. I love it. That's yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> I'm listen. I'm southern. My family would disown me if I missed uh, giving dinner. Well, unbeknownst to me, I was about to start a divorce, so it didn't matter. Didn't, didn't it matter. turned out it didn't yeah, matter. Who cares what those people thought of me? Plus, yeah, I had the advantage matter. of saying I lost all that weight before I knew I was getting divorced. So, like, I wasn't the guy who, like, oh, now that she left me, I'm going to get in shape. I was like, no, I did it, and then so photographic uh, evidence and yes, everything i can prove it all like, <laughs> absolutely i always say and we'll get back to, i just want to this is i would think once this, he gets going sorry, he can't stop i always say that i think what really ended the marriage was the day that I ended up weighing less than she did i think <laughs> oh. that like she just couldn't deal anymore and then the wheels came that's off a, that's a nail in the coffin right they there. were pretty loose wheels to begin with right? <laughs> so <laughs> back to you and peloton <laughs> Oh goodness. Um, okay, so I thought when I read your post that you don't have a bike. I must have totally misread that. So so you do have a bike. I do. Um so funny story about that. I am the classic cheap cheapskate. This was a classic case of it coming right back around to bite me. So I got a bike um, from Amazon, uh, did did the whole uh, Peloton hack. I'm sure uh, your, your listeners out there, those of those of you who are app writers who who, um, who have done their research have found there's a, a billion and one different bikes, but I wanted to be as close to the Peloton as I could and not spend a ton of money, right? Um, so I found a bike on Amazon. Uh, I won't name the bike uh, just, just for the simple fact that you know, I'll tell you this. If if your listeners would like to know what bike not to get, they can send me a message via uh, Instagram. <laughs> we'll, we'll just leave it at that. Got it. Um, long story short, April the 18th, a week before my birthday, I was doing a 60 minute ride and the bearings in the bike exploded. <gasps> yeah. Right in the middle of quarantine, too. If, uh, <laughs> if you guys didn't catch that, we had nothing yeah. else to do. Oh, and my so, God. Uh, and, and, hang on. Give, give us the date again. April 18th. So you had had it. So you had only had it for like three and a half months ish. Yep, Oof. absolutely. Yikes! Um, and I turned. I nearly bought a Peloton that night. I was so disgusted and so it just just off off myself w- with anger because I called and the company in question wouldn't. So they they said that the bearings weren't part of my uh, warranty. I would have to have them re- replace myself. What? 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 That's, what kind of warranty is that? What does it cover, right? right? Right. Yeah, like that seems like that. Yeah. That. So. So they they informed me, and I I immediately hung up the phone, and and my wife talked me down. She peeled me off the ceiling, as I like yeah, to say. That's she would have had to me too. Not that I'm not um, my fight wouldn't have been about a bike, obviously, but I still would have been. Oh, yeah, I oof. so mad. <laughs> um. So she peeled me off the ceiling. We 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 
loaded up the dog, took a long walk, talked about it. And when we got back, I started doing research again and I nearly bought a Peloton and, and, uh, the bike I came to, uh, that I have now and, and that I'll have for the foreseeable future. It's a rock solid bike is the, the Bowflex C6. Okay. Um, very popular bike amongst app riders in terms of, uh, performance cadence, quietness, uh, the way that the bike performs, it's it's on par with the Peloton bike. Um, I do miss that big 23-inch screen, right? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but for the money, um, I think I paid a, about $1,000 for the bike and uh, absolutely love it. Uh, still buying both bikes on a little less than what I would have bought a Peloton for, but for my trouble, I would much rather have a Peloton sitting downstairs. Sure, I get yeah. that. I was just thinking that. I was like, boy, if you, if you had known... It would have right, been easier gonna... to just so like I guess in a way your advice if someone's in a similar situation is it start with the Bowflex or is it just don't do what I do and just buy the damn Peloton. Honestly, I, I mean I, I I love the way that the Bowflex feels. Uh, the fact that you save about thirteen hundred dollars on it uh, is, is a real value point. But if you have like. I, I should have bought, like you said, buy the damn bike. And I should have bought the damn bike <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, if you have the income to do so, absolutely buy the Peloton. It is, think of it as the, the Bowflex on steroids because it's, uh, as far as rideability, both bikes are, are spot on. The seats are almost identical. The frames are, are, you could sit the frames beside one another. And aside from the belt cover you wouldn't know which frame was which if you if you debadged both okay um i other than the big gigantic screen and all the telemetrics i you know it stands right up but i like those telemetrics and I, i'm an athlete sure. um played baseball all the way up to college and and being able to push myself via numbers is is great um but i found a couple ways around that yeah, so I've I've heard that um, that people do that with other bikes. Like if if they have, there's like all kinds of different um, formulas out there that people even have. Like if you have X bike and Peloton calls out, you know, sixty resistance, you can then convert it over to whatever resistance on whatever bike that you're you're using. Do you find that that's helpful? What? It is very I'm, very helpful. I'm laughing because I'm just thinking like, wow, the only thing that could make exercise even worse is doing math. Add math. <laughs> like, what, <laughs> like, what sort of unique brand of torture are you gonna like? How about we make my ex wife an instructor? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Tom, I'm telling you, this is. The, I, I mean, we we've got to we've got to get you on the bike hardcore. I'm, I'm telling you, it is. There's no it's math. A, it's just a, it's a it's a different type of suffering. Yeah. No. <laughs> so luckily, um, with the Schwinn IC4 and the Bowflex C6, which are uh, think of it as Chevy and Cadillac, essentially the same bike. The Bowflex tends to have a little better quality uh, components. So those two bikes are very popular and there's a seller on Etsy and I'll blast that out uh, on my Instagram. If you guys are interested for you app riders who are listening uh, and you have a C6 or an IC4, um, there is a seller on Etsy that does a pre-made conversion chart uh, that's 3D printed on a piece of really nice black and red plastic. So it matches up with your, with your bike and it is made to specifically go right below where your tablet goes, right? So, you know, you can adjust your, your resistance, uh, just as an example. So a 30 on Peloton is only a five on Bowflex. So, or a nine, I, I apologize. It's a nine on, on Bowflex. So it, Bowflex tends to go a little harder, uh, on the upper end of the spectrum. So they, they kind of just skew it down, but it's, it's really nice to not have to do any math while I'm sweating and dying. <laughs> yeah, I can just exactly. Glance, I can glance down at my, uh, at my chart and be good. Yeah. You want, you want all that glucose to go towards your uh, actual workout, not thinking. <laughs> 100%. I don't think well anyway. But it's always nice to not do math. I Well, I, I, I do agree with that. I'm not a fan of math, as you know. No. <laughs> okay, so uh, so you have this chart that you're able to use. And do you feel like you're getting the same experience from... Uh, I know that you can't see it on the screen, so that's going to be a different experience. You can't see the, the, the metrics in the same way you know, the Peloton metrics, but, but do you right. still feel like you're getting out of it what you want out of it? Cause I know metrics so, aren't important for everybody in the same way. 
No. Um, so I, I should probably go a little deeper into it. The, the Bowflex bike is a, uh, is a Bluetooth compatible bike. So I can connect my iPad to the bike itself. It will read my cadence. Okay. Um, my heart rate connects via my Apple watch. And there is a secondary app. If you have an iPad pro, you can run two apps at the same time and you can run a secondary app that shows your power. So I still have all of my metrics that I would get off a Peloton bike, it albeit, you know, between two applications, uh, I still have all of those telemetrics that, that I'm looking for on the Peloton. As I said before, though, it's really nice to just have it all on one big screen and not have to run a couple of different apps. But sure. uh, it, it, it's a great solution for, for those folks who, you know, would rather just pay the $12 a month rather than the $39. Uh, for those folks who don't want to invest the twenty the $2,300, even though it's well worth it. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So I'm just curious, does the, does the Bowflex have any content or uh, is it just a bike? Um, so uh, they marketed their bike to be a multi-platform bike. So you can use it with other apps, um, like Sufferfest. Sufferfest is one of my favorite non-Peloton apps, uh, for those folks who spin. Uh, it's a, it's a really, really great app. Um, you can do, uh, either guided or non-guided classes, which is great. They just give you cues, uh, Zwift, which is kind of an animated bike racing, uh, application, and then Bowflex has their own app uh, called See the World. And they're all kind of, uh, you get a little bit of free content and then there's a paywall. But I, 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 the, the, the value for performance that Peloton has given me since day one, uh, and it's, it's been able to, to fuel the transformation that, that I've been able to make with myself. Um, so I'm, I'm really loyal to Peloton. Okay. Well, tell us about your transformation. Oh, gosh. Um, so... Let, we'll, we'll go back to uh, Thanksgiving, uh, <laughs> turkey and candy and all that good stuff. <laughs> so in, in typical Southern family, uh, you know, uh, the, the way that the Southern family uh, uh, operates, someone in my family more or less told me that I was getting fat. And I was. Well, let's let's just we'll leave it there. Okay. Uh, I had I, I had gained some weight. Life happens. Work happens. We we all know that that, that things happen. I was happy, but uh, physically I was not in good shape, and uh, I didn't think too much of it. A lot of that stuff kind of rolls off my back, and so I go to the doctor for my six month checkup, and in late December, and I'm told that I'm prehypertensive for the first time in my life. Yikes. And I'm 36. Uh, and I, I've dodged bullets my entire life there. I, I have a history of heart problems in, in my family and I wanted to be around for my wife uh, and, and my family for as long as humanly possible. So it was kind of a wake up call prior to getting bigger. I was a CrossFitter. I think I said that before and I was really fit, had some injuries, um, not, not disparaging CrossFit. It's a great sport. Um, I just, I wore my body out sure. uh, plain and simple. So started, uh, started on this, this whole Peloton journey and it's been five to six days a week. I don't go any longer than 60 minutes. It's usually a really hard 30 to 60 minute sprint, burn as many calories as I can picked up intermittent fasting. My, my physician and I, uh, talked about a, a heart healthy diet, uh, and limiting my ca my calories, uh, along with intermittent fasting and, uh, I'm rolling up on 70 pounds lost in about six months. So that's amazing. Wow. Congratulations. Nice. So Thank how you do you, much. what's your structure for the intermittent fasting? I was wondering the same thing. Um, <laughs> it's a, it's a 16, eight. Um, okay. I start eating at 12. I start eating at noon and I try to keep it somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,650 calories for now. Uh, once I hit target weight, I'm going to adjust that up to, uh, 1775 is what we agreed upon. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's so I can still have a slice of pizza or a burger. That's, which is great. Um, I, I went paleo for a while. Um, paleo just didn't work for me. I, uh, my body operates a lot better with a little bit of carbs, more fat than carbs and kind of a medium amount of protein. Okay. Um, I, I'm a shorter kind of squat dude and um, I tend to hold muscle mass no matter what I do. So I don't need a ton of protein to keep that muscle mass, um, but I got to have a few carbs or I get crabby. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. I need, I need carbs <laughs> oh. more than a few. <laughs> oh, absolutely. 
<laughs> I'm being kind to myself. I need a lot of carbs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so with with your Peloton, are you riding the bike all the time? Like, is that your only activity that you're using from Peloton? Or are you doing other things? No, I'm doing some stretching, uh, doing a little bit of yoga. Um, so I picked up, I'm going to plug another product. I, I have been a pro wrestling fan since I was a child and I'm still a man child who likes pro wrestling. Um, so I picked up uh, DDP yoga a couple years ago and to kind of keep myself uh, moving around and limber, I, I do a lot of that work uh, and I do some uh, Peloton yoga as well as stretching and meditation. So the meditation is the second favorite thing that I have in that Peloton app. I love all those meditation classes. Dennis is my jam. I, I do use it, but there, there are a couple of different things that I do. Okay. What, what is DEP yoga? I've never even heard of that. So DDP yoga is a rebranded yoga. It's, it used to be called uh, yoga for real guys. <laughs> and there was a, a former pro wrestler who took it over and basically made it. I've, I've done hot yoga and traditional yoga before, and this is more, I guess, what you would call power yoga. Oh, okay. Um, so it's it, it, the the movements are a little bit more dynamic and not so much um, really deliberate and sm- and slow moving. Um, it's a focus on on keeping tension in your muscles, uh, and then the the latter part of the classes are kind of centered around your stretching and and ensuring that you're at center with yourself. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Who was the wrestler that took it over? Diamond Dallas Page. Oh, there we go. There. Do you know who that is? No, but it's DDP. That makes sense. That's there. Okay. That's how you go. I don't. So on my other podcasts, uh, one of the guys on the show is like the world's biggest wrestling fan. The way I am with the monkeys, he is with wrestling. In fact, we have a sound effect because whenever he mentions wrestling within the podcast, because he can't not bring up wrestling at some point we could talk about schindler's list and he will somehow make a reference to wrestling kind in the of like of you in movies in general yeah <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about. six degrees to hulk hogan what are you gonna yeah. do <laughs> that's awesome so i was but, just gonna, uh, i was gonna ask him if he'd ever heard of it if you know yeah if oh, I, i'm sure he has it's, yeah. it's huge in our world um and, and ddp is a is a he's a great guy he's um one of the most uh, positively affirming people that that are out there. His uh, his just his aura. I, I hate to get go there, but his aura <laughs> is just addictive to listen to him. Right? He's uh, just a, a hugely positive person. And uh, wrestling fan or not, uh, you're better for listening to the things that DDP has to say. Well, if you're gonna make it in wrestling, you you have to have a big personality. You do. It right? doesn't mean you necessarily have a nice personality, but you gotta have a big one. So if Absolutely. you know what I mean, so if 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 he's nice, then he's going to be epically nice. <laughs> <laughs> In the biggest way. Yeah. <laughs> so as far as Peloton goes, do you have like a favorite instructor that you ride with? Mm, that's a three-way tie. That's, okay. that's definitely a three-way tie. So all for different reasons. Um, Alex. Um, Alex is, reminds me a whole lot of my, of my CrossFit uh, family, uh, the coaches at CrossFit. So uh, I feel at home with Alex. Um, Kendall, uh, for her intensity. Uh, I can never not get a great burn with Kendall. Okay. Um, and then Dennis, because Dennis has the ability to put together the absolute best playlists on the face of the planet. He does have some great playlists. Uh, yeah. I, I love his uh, his depth and breadth of music choices. Oh, like it's, it's incredible. I'm, I'm yeah. super eclectic where it comes to music and he and I are kindred spirits there. That's that's pretty cool. Uh, another thing, I don't I don't know if you've ever had a chance to listen to our interview with him, but uh, he gets really deep when he talks about he stuff. And uh, um, he talked about like some of his favorite books, and he talked about like how his mom uh, is like an English professor, and it it was it's just a really interesting conversation. You get a whole different side of Dennis that does not come through on the bike that might be of interest to you. So it's pretty cool. That one's on my queue. I saw it today as I was scrolling through your your episodes. That one's on my queue to listen to. He's he just seems to be uh, the the most eclectic and interesting person out of out of that group of of uh, instructors. And he's probably the one that I would want to meet most. <laughs> he's he's very nice in person too. Very nice. Oh. So what about what about the groups? Uh, I know you mentioned the Peloton app group. Is is that the one you're most active in or are you active in some of the other groups? 
Yeah, so definitely the Peloton app group uh, posted a, uh, a progress picture that I had no idea would blow up like it did and <laughs> got 3,000 plus likes, which was, <laughs> I've never even come close to that on social. I'm not, I'm not huge on social media. I've posted my, my project progress pics on my Instagram, but for the most part, I you know, I'm not a huge social media person. Uh, and I posted a, uh, a progress picture, got a gigantic response. And um, that's actually what I think led you to, to maybe come across uh, <laughs> my profile. But um, I'm really active in the bow. We have a, we have a Bowflex and non Peloton bike app writers Facebook group that I'm pretty active in the actual Peloton Swexy swarm. I'm sure you've heard of that one. That one's huge. Um, yeah. I'm active in that one, but uh, the main is the, is the app writers. Okay. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, That makes sense. Well, yeah, it does. Yeah. Absolutely. So what's yep. your, uh, what's your leaderboard name? Uh, my leaderboard name is the same as the rest of my, uh, the rest of my social and it's the lame bear and it, uh, it kind of stems from CrossFit. <laughs> um, so one of my very, very good friends, he's a, he's a CrossFit coach, uh, down in, in, uh, Winchester, Kentucky, uh, shout out to Chris Bean. I'm sure he'll end up listening to this and, uh, Sasquatch is, is one of my favorite people on the face of this planet. So I was, I was the bear and he was the Sasquatch. Just, just, it came out of one of the coach's mouths uh, during a workout and it stuck. Well, shortly after that, I injured myself and I was the lame bear. So you embraced it. You kept it. I, I wrapped my arms right around the lame bear and that's, that's who I am. <laughs> that's awesome. Got to steer, steer into the skid. You do. You do. Tell you. you do. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Well, no, um, that's, that was, that was how it came to pass. So uh, feel free to add me on the leaderboard folks. Uh, <laughs> I always add back. <laughs> that's awesome. So what about any, what about anybody else in your household? Does anybody else do any of the Peloton classes? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, my wife picked it up with me. Uh, she was fit already. So this was just something else for her to do. Um, <laughs> and she, uh, actually I'm pretty sure because I, I made my one last water run downstairs, uh, before coming up to, to zoom call you guys and her workout stuff was laid out on the bed. So I'm going to guess she's probably on the bike right about now. <laughs> <laughs> That's Should awesome. you plug her leaderboard name or does she not? Yeah, no, no, no. It's uh, it's called uh, she on the leaderboard. She's weird little beast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, is there a story behind that as well, or? We so we are uh, Tom. You love movies. We are yes. horror movie fans. Um, okay. If you, you guys sound are, just like Joe, Joe is also a huge horror movie guy. <laughs> so that's that was one of the reasons that that my wife and I uh, really clicked when we started dating was horror movies. So for for you guys who are uh, who take a look at my at my Instagram, most of my progress pictures are upstairs in front of a mirror. Well, there's a picture right over my shoulder that she painted of Jeffrey Dahmer, or not Jeffrey. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, she's she's going to absolutely kill me. It's definitely not <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer. Um, it's Ted Bundy. And oh, okay. She's like, how so, dare you get the serial killers mixed up? Oh, she I is you obsessed with serial killers. I should know my serial killers. Believe me, if you live in this house, you know serial killers. Um, but we about so, serial killers. You should probably add that. You know right. about we, serial. We know killers. about serial killers. You don't killers. actually and, know serial killers. No, I was getting we don't worried. Want the letters, people. Well, yeah, like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We're we're really nice people. We just like really crazy. That's stuff. how they get you. <laughs> yeah. If they nice looked people. crazy, they wouldn't. It wouldn't work. They gotta. Yeah. <laughs> wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, um, that that's uh, we uh, we we embrace horror in this house, and uh, it was just a just kind of a horror themed name that she liked, and she went with it. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. Okay, so does does she uh, ride? Does she do anything besides the bike as well, or does she stick with just the bike classes? Just the bike classes. She does a little. She does a little hit stuff on her own. Uh, like I said, she's 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 incredibly fit anyway. I, I'm a I'm I outkicked my coverage tenfold with her. Um, <laughs> there's no way that I should have what I have. But anyway, um, but 
she, uh, she, she's incredibly fit anyway. So she kind of does her own thing. She keeps herself in great shape and, uh, she, she should be proud of it. She does a great job. She is not lame. (laughs) No, that's me. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> what is your favorite like horror movie or franchise? Oh gosh. So my personal favorite uh is the Nightmare on Elm Street series. Okay. Um I it very nostalgic. Uh it's the it's the very first horror movie that I remember watching and I can okay. I like I even remember where I was when I saw Nightmare on Elm Street part 1 for that for me and then uh she's a huge fan of the Halloween series but she doesn't like Halloween 3. I love Halloween 3. Well, Halloween three has nothing to do with the rest of the. It's, it's but exactly. that, but see that's he wanted Halloween three to be Halloween two. Like his idea was the franchise was going to be an anthology series, absolutely, and, and there'd be a, a ton of movies, but they all revolved around Halloween. And then they made him make Halloween two a direct sequel, and yep. then by the third one he could make his anthology thing. But then people were like. What are you doing? This has not. There's no Michael Myers. There's nobody with with a, with a knife. Like there's just right. But yeah, <laughs> the, the the if they had branded that movie anything else, it would have been a great '80s horror film, and people yeah. wouldn't hate on it. So okay, yeah. he is okay. not wrong. He is. Okay. A, we we did a full episode on real spoilers for <laughs> Halloween three, and he is he is totally correct. <laughs> totally <laughs> correct. Did she like the Halloween uh, when the the one that they just did that where they basically jettisoned everything and did it and said twenty or you know forty years later it's a sequel everything else it didn't happen. We, so we kind of we kind of watched it with with a fresh perspective, man. Uh-huh. Um, I, I thought it was really well done in bringing Jamie Lee Curtis back. Yeah. If you watch it with a fresh perspective, I think it's a I think it's a fantastic movie. If you try to put it in canon, I'm not so sure it works. Totally. I, I li- liked it a lot. And I, the thing I liked about it is it did something I've never seen a horror movie really do, which is like in horror movies, like there, there's the, the ki- killer running around. He's still stabbing everybody. He's killing everybody. And then at the end, you know, in these kind of movies, there's what they call the final girl and the girl that gets away. And then the, but then that final girl, it's like, yay, I beat the monster. I won. And then they kind of freeze frame and everybody's happy. And it's like. Well, you're not happy. Like you just watched all of your friends get brutally murdered. So, like, yes, didn't you, need them anyway. Yeah, like, <laughs> yes, right. you're happy to be alive, but you would be traumatized Absolutely. by that, and you'd have survivor's guilt, right? One hundred percent. And so the way they had, they had, you know kind of attacked the story, no pun intended, in the in the one the Halloween sequel that came out, you know, two years ago, was it was like what would happen? What would you, what would Jamie Lee Curtis's character be like? If she really went through something like that, right? And how would that truly impact her? And Love it. I thought it was a great take on on that. I so. completely. Tom just agree. went in. Tom just went into movie mode. I nerded out on you. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's he, cool. That's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, talk, we're talking horror films, man. I'm in. <laughs> well, uh, back to back to working out. So if you insist. I do. Um, so <laughs> I'm curious uh, if you what your advice would be for somebody just getting started. And and before you answer, I want to specifically point out that that you went through a major change in a very short time period. So um, so how how realistic is that for the average person? Cause you really committed to make that happen. Right. So this is, uh, I'm going to do my best not to get emotional because this was a big deal to me. I'll tell your listeners what I told my brother. And that is you have to have a driving force behind. You have to have a driving force behind wh- how you make your change. That fear that I wouldn't be around and in my wife and I don't have kids and we don't plan on having kids. Um, but not being around to get old with her, she's younger than me. It it scared the bejesus out of me. And, um, I resolved in that moment to be consistent and consistency is King. There is no magic pill. There's not a magic shake. Get your ass out of bed, live your life at full throttle as best as you can. And when you have the opportunity to better yourself, take the opportunity, you know, and, and today for me, it, it's consistency. I, uh, so my best friend, we're still best friends from high school all the way up until now. He, uh, he was one of the Peloton owners that I was, I was lucky enough to, to test the bike out on and he's fallen off. I've more than doubled his amount of rides now. And 
he, he asked me the other, we were on the golf course the other day and, and he asked me, he said, man, you were, you were just tiny. Um, and I, I have, I've dropped a bunch of weight and dropped a, a bunch of clothes sizes. And he said, man, you, you've just, you've completely 180 to yourself. And he was like, man, how, how are you staying with us? I was like, I was like, dude, we, we played baseball and football together. Like, come on, you know what you need to do. Just be consistent day after day. And that's the way I've looked at everything um, where, where it comes to, to workouts, where it comes to the way, I, way that I eat. You know, I sat down with a client today and, you know, went out to lunch. Did I want to do uh, something not so healthy? Yeah, of course I did. But uh, in the grand scheme of things, that, that bacon cheeseburger that I could have ordered today will hinder my performance tomorrow. So, um, and today, you know, uh, that's, that's the best advice that I could give someone who's just getting into it. You're going to run into stumbling blocks and you're going to feel like shit. Uh, apologies for the language, but I mean, you are like, you're going to feel bad. There is another side to that. And you do get through to the other side. You know, I tell Crystal that sometimes when she's like, oh, I don't feel like my workout was that good today. And I'm like, those are probably the most important ones. Right. There it is. When you, you don't know? feel like hitting the bike or you don't feel like hitting the floor, um, the days that you don't want to pick up the bar are the days that you're going to make the most change in yourself because you're resolving to be better because you know, you need to not because you want to, you know, here's what you should say to your friend. The next time he asks you like, how did you do it? Like, what are you doing that? I'm not, here's what you say to him. You tell him that it was the bow flex <laughs> and then, and then you offer to swap bikes with him just because you're such a good friend. You're such a good friend. You know what I'm going to do for you? I will trade you my Bowflex for your Peloton so you can have the same results. You know, I mean, he, he's got a point. The results speak for themselves, right? Right. Yeah. I This is my gift to you, friend. That's... Oh gosh, it, it 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 would be great. He's uh, <laughs> and you never know. I might I might end up with his bike before it's all over with. <laughs> <laughs> and even if you lose a friend, you gained a Peloton. So well, he, he's going to listen to this and he's going to flip out on me. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> We'll send you a specially edited version of this yeah. where we remove this. Yeah, can we talk after this? I'm so sorry. Yeah. And, then, and then you send him this. Oh, I had a special message about you that I just, in the, you need to listen to this version. It's like the dance remix. Oh, it's free. God. That's awesome. Oh, that's uh, funny. So uh, I guess where can people find you on social media? I guess you talked about it a little bit, but where can they find you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm the most active on Facebook and Instagram, um, more so Instagram than Facebook. Uh, you can find me at the lame bear on Instagram. Um, <laughs> and you can just look me up by my, um, by my, my name, Rich Payton on Facebook. I am, I'm, I think I'm private on there. I'm not, again, I don't do a huge amount of social media. I think I'm private on there, but, uh, if you'll, if you'll shoot me a message and just tell me that you listen to the podcast, I'll be glad to accept you as a friend and, answer any questions that you may have i i I've, I've answered a million and one questions from from the various facebook book groups that i'm active in so i, I if i can help one person uh, i'm beyond happy about it that's fabulous awesome and you mentioned i think before we started recording that you have you have a podcast too what's your what's your podcast I do. Um, so I have a little car group down here in Huntington, West Virginia called Project Midnight. Um, we're a car club promoting uh, kind of positivity and, and inclusiveness within the car scene. Um, you can find us at uh, the P12 podcast uh, on YouTube. Uh, we do YouTube. We don't do uh, anything audio only because our audience, or audience requested that we do YouTube only. And that's what we did. So uh, we are on YouTube as the P12 podcast. Awesome. Awesome. Is it any particular car or is it all cars? All cars. Everything's he every, said it's we in, want you he we said just it's want inclusive. you to come out. He said it's inclusive. <laughs> they can't just talk about Fords if they're inclusive. I, hey, I, I don't judge. <laughs> I was just asking. Yeah. Yeah. They're Calvin we, stickers. We, they're not even peeing. That's no. how inclusive they are. That's we 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 cut all of the, the right side of that Calvin sticker off. It doesn't even <laughs> it's just Calvin. <laughs> That's awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, taking time to join us today. We really appreciate yes, it. Yes, thank you. Hey, no problem. Thank you guys so much for having me. So I guess that brings uh, this episode to an end. What, pray tell, do you have in store for people next week? We are going to talk to Deborah Anzalone. Awesome. Yes. 
very, very interesting life that she has led. Lots of moving, lots of fitness. It's, it's been literally a lifesaver for her. So, and she's one of the comeback recipients of oh, Peloton Bike. Fascinating. So mm -hmm. until next week, where can people find you? People can find me at facebook.com slash crystal D O'Keefe. They can find me on Instagram, Twitter, on the bike, and of course the tread at clip out crystal. And you can find me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. Uh, you can find the show online, facebook.com slash the clip out while you're there, like the page, join the group and wherever you get the show from, be sure and subscribe. So you never miss an episode. And don't forget, we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the clip out where you can watch entire episodes in their entirety. I think that's how that works. Yeah, that's how that works. So that's it for this one. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, keep pedaling and running. Clip in.